Hey, what's up folks, how's it going? This is Watch from MW Technology. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the best wireless microphones for under $150. That's why I have this fancy necklace over here. We're gonna be specifically taking a look at the Rode Wireless ME, which is the cheapest option from Rode. And you can get a transmitter and receiver for under $150. And we're gonna be taking a look at the Hollyland Lark M2 which for about $140, you can get two transmitters and a USB-C receiver. We also have the previous generation Hollyland Lark M1, which you can actually get for under $60 if you just get the transmitter and receiver. Furthermore, we're gonna be looking at the newer CM28. It's an all-in-one system for under $130. And just for a little bit of fun, we're gonna throw in an ultra cheap $15 Amazon wireless microphone just to see how it sounds and how it compares against these other mics. So I'm not gonna waste any time. Let's get right into our AB comparison and uh, you're gonna to listen to each microphone in a quiet environment to see how they compare. This is the sound of the Rode Wireless ME. This is the Rode Wireless ME. This is the Hollyland Lark M2. This is the Hollyland Lark M2. This is the sound of the Hollyland Lark M1. This is the Lark M1 from Hollyland. This is the newer CM28 wireless microphone, the newer microphone. This is the sound of the cheap $15 wireless microphone. This is the sound of the cheap $15 wireless microphone. Now, if you want, you can go back and listen to those samples again, but I think the one that sounds the best is gonna be the Rode Wireless ME. It has the most neutral sounding overall profile. The pickup is very natural, sounds the most true to life. And we also measured uh, the signal to noise ratio where we went in a quiet environment and just measured how much hiss is inherently in the microphone itself. And it measured about minus 65 decibels RMS max, which is uh, kind of uh, the overall amplitude of when the microphone is not being used and the levels are normalized to minus 20 LUFS, which is a pretty standard broadcasting uh, level. So in that scenario, uh, the least amount of noise in the signal is coming from the Rode Wireless ME. So that means you have great dynamic range, you have low signal distortion and uh, low artifacts and things like that. So. Uh, the other cool thing about the Rode Wireless ME is that if you actually do an A-B comparison between the Rode Wireless Pro, there's not a massive difference. Take a look. This is the sound of the Rode Wireless Pro. Rode Wireless Pro. This is the sound of the Rode Wireless ME. This is the Rode Wireless ME. Now, if you do a little bit of uh, post-processing, I'm very confident that you can pretty much make the ME sound exactly like the Pro version of the Rode Wireless. Great for intercutting, or if you wanna just get the most out of this budget-oriented wireless microphone. Now, the second best sounding microphone, in my opinion, has to be the Hollyland Lark M2. It definitely has some built-in compression and EQ that's baked into the mic, which is great if you want a fast turnaround post-production workflow, where you just wanna get a video out as soon as possible, upload it, and not have to worry about any post-processing or fixing the audio. So it's great from a streamlined process and uh, great for uh, smartphone-only uh, productions. Now the Lark M1, on the other hand, is a little bit more flatter in terms of its frequency response. It has a little bit more uh, kind of mid-tones in to the sound, but it definitely sounds pretty usable as well. And I was curious to see uh, if the microphone was actually quite similar. If we were to do some post-production, could we make the M1 sound like the M2? So I did a spectrum analysis on the EQ. I matched the frequencies and boom, take a listen. This is the Hollyland Lark M2. This is the Hollyland Lark M2. This is the sound of the Hollyland Lark M1. This is the Lark M1 from Hollyland. And as you can hear right there, the M2 pretty much can sound like the M1 and vice versa, just with a little bit of post-production. So it's great if you wanna intercut or just get the most out of the M1. Now the sound on the newer CM28 is very similar to the Lark M1. Flat in terms of its frequency response, fairly mid-range heavy, and it can be easily corrected in post as we demonstrated earlier. And uh, the only problem with it uh, from a just uh, sound perspective is that it does have a pretty high noise floor. It uh, measured around uh, minus 53 decibels RMS max, 
which uh, is a little bit more than the minus 60 decibels that the Holy Land microphones measured in at in the exact same scenario. So what that means is the background noise or the inherent hiss that's built into the signal on the microphone is a little bit noisier than uh, what we find with uh, the Holy Land and indeed the Rode mic. And lastly, in terms of the sound, unsurprisingly, is going to be the cheap $15 microphone that you're listening to right now. It has uh, definitely a lot of mid-range, lacks any kind of bass treble presence, aka it sounds like a tin can. Uh, now you can go into post and kind of fix some of these audio issues, but you could only polish a turd so much. Uh, the other issue that I had with this cheap mic is that you can't really turn off uh, noise cancellation. Yes, you can kind of turn it off, but it always detects a certain amount of noise in the background area. And if it doesn't meet that noise, it'll actually cut off the signal regardless of whether uh, the noise cancellation is on or off. So in order to test the noise floor, I went into my quiet environment, turned off noise cancellation, and there was no signal. As you can see on this waveform, we have clearly cut off signals once uh, there's a specific threshold that's met. So we can't really measure the noise, but when I'm talking and when you're actually listening to the audio when I'm speaking, you could definitely tell that there's some background noise, there's artifacts, and plus the signal integrity is quite weak as well. Uh, so it can be easily dropped off if you go further beyond 50 to 60 feet. And if you have any obstructions in the way, say goodbye to your signal as well. Now what we're gonna do is do a simple noise cancellation test of all these microphones, except for the Rode Wireless ME, which doesn't have noise cancellation. So we're gonna go through all the mics. I'm gonna tell you which mic I'm speaking through. We're gonna have some background noise in through the computer speakers, and we're gonna turn the noise cancellation on and off and see how they sound. This is the Holy Land Lark M2 with noise cancellation off in a noisy environment. Holy Land M2 noise cancellation is off. This is the Holy Land Lark M2 with noise cancellation on. Holy Land Lark M2 with noise cancellation on in a noisy background. This is the Holy Land Lark M1 with noise cancellation turned off in a noisy environment. This is the Lark M1 in a noisy environment. This is the Holy Land Lark M1 in a noisy environment with noise cancellation turned on. This is the Lark M1 in a noisy environment with noise cancellation turned on. This is the newer CM28. Noise cancellation is off. Newer CM28. Noise cancellation off. This is the newer CM28 with noise cancellation turned on. Noisy environment. This is the newer CM28. Noise cancellation is turned on. This is the cheap $15 Amazon microphone with noise cancellation turned off in a noisy environment. This is the cheap mic in a noisy environment. This is the cheap $15 Amazon microphone in a noisy environment with noise cancellation turned on. This is the cheap mic noise cancellation on in a noisy environment. Now to summarize what we just heard on noise cancellation, I think the Hollyland products are doing a pretty decent job. They do a good job of suppressing the overall background noise without interfering with the main audio track too much. Uh, they're not as good as the Shure and uh, DJI products, uh, but uh, one of the things that you do have to understand with the Lark M2 is that it actually has two settings, a high, strong, or weak setting. On the high settings, you're getting about minus 20 decibels of reduction on your noise. And on the low settings, you're getting around 10 to 12 decibels of reduction. On the M1, it's pretty much just set to one setting, which is more of a lower tier setting, similar uh, to what we find on the M2. And in that setting, the audio is quite usable on both microphones. But when you're using the M2 in high or strong noise cancellation, it has a fairly aggressive gate. And what an audio or noise gate is, it pretty much sucks the signal on and off and allows the uh, track to uh, go through uh, with your audio processing. So if you have an aggressive gate where it stops the noise 
a, a little bit uh, too quickly before you stop speaking, you're gonna cut off your endpoints of your vocal track and it'll sound weird, unnatural. You lose the echo and the ambiance of your environment quite a bit and uh, doesn't make the audio very usable or natural sounding. So in the low setting is what I would probably recommend you use the M2 uh, with and the M1 is just set to low all the time. Now on the CM20 by Newer as you're listening to right now, the noise cancellation is pretty much the same as the M2 but set to the high settings. And unfortunately, unlike the Lark M2 where you can switch it down to low settings and fix some of these issues that the noise cancellation has, that's not an option on the newer. You pretty much have uh, noise cancellation on or off of what I can tell right now. And when the noise cancellation is on, it's heavily gated. So all the effects that we mentioned previously with your voice being cut off at the end and uh, lacking details and uh, showing artifacts and making it sound kind of worse and worse and pretty unnatural, making the audio unusable in most circumstances. I really think that this is probably the big issue with this newer microphone. And in fact, I think it sounds way better with the noise cancellation off than on. Take a listen. This is the newer CM28 with noise cancellation off. This is the newer CM28 noise cancellation off. This is the newer CM28 with noise cancellation turned on. This is the newer CM28 noise cancellation is turned on. Now with our cheap $15 wireless mic, it actually does a pretty surprisingly okay job at noise cancellation. I'm getting around eight to 10 decibels of reduction when the noise is present in the background. So that's cool to see. And ironically enough, it actually sounds better with the noise cancellation on than off, which is the opposite of the newer. This is the cheap $15 Amazon microphone with noise cancellation turned off. This is the cheap $15 Amazon microphone. Noise cancellation is off. This is the cheap $15 Amazon microphone with noise cancellation turned on. This is the cheap $15 Amazon microphone with noise cancellation turned on. Now to kind of organize our thoughts, I'm just gonna go through each microphone and give you my kind of final opinion on it. And then we're gonna select uh, which microphone is the best uh, for the specific price points. So when it comes uh, to the M2 versus M1 on the Hollyland side, I think uh, the biggest difference uh, from a design perspective and from uh, most perspectives is that that design of that magnetically attaching a little nub right there is definitely pretty awesome. Very unique, super minimalistic, and if you want uh, uh, the least distracting wireless microphone, it's probably one of the better options out there. It also sounds a little bit better out of the box as we've mentioned before. The other thing too is that the battery life is a little bit better on uh, the M2. You're looking at about 10 hours on the receiver and on the transmitter itself versus eight hours on the receiver transmitter on the M1. Furthermore, on the M1, the receiver is quite simple and uh, there's no real app integration, unlike uh, the M2, which you can hook it up to your iOS or Android platform and change uh, a lot of the different settings on the effects, noise control, volume, and things like that. So you get a little bit more advanced feature with the app control on the M2 compared to the M1. Okay, so now we switch over to the Rode Wireless ME and we're gonna talk about pros and cons. Firstly, definitely an awesome sounding built-in microphone. And not only that, you also have another microphone that's built into the receiver, so you can do two-way interviews or stereo audio without having to rely on two extra transmitters, which is nice. The other nice thing is it has a 3.5 millimeter external microphone connection on the transmitter itself. So if you don't like the uh, mic sound built in, you can use any professional lavalier mic or shotgun mic, anything you like. So it's a great transmitter for just mics in general. Plus, as we mentioned earlier, it has the best signal to noise ratio. So the lowest amount of inherent noise in the microphone signal itself. Furthermore, the Rode wireless transmission system is probably the most robust, secure, and uh, has the least amount of latency out of most of the wireless systems in this kind of $150 category. Now, what are some of the downsides? Well, like all Rode wireless mics, this thing is massive, it's cumbersome, and it's awkward to use. Definitely distracting for videos. The other thing it doesn't have is noise cancellation. Even though post-production noise cancellation is probably gonna be better than most noise cancellation systems built into this microphone, but sometimes it's nice to have a convenient and powerful noise cancellation system like what we find with uh, Shure and uh, DJI products, uh, but uh, it still doesn't have it, so it's a little limited in uh, recording in kind of noisy environments. The other thing too is there's no 32-bit float 
or uh, built-in uh, recording capabilities like what we find with the Rode Wireless Pro. So you're always going to be tethered to a smartphone or camera to record your audio. Another downside is the receiver itself has pretty much no controls whatsoever. Uh, you have to connect it to Rode Central either on your uh, PC or smartphone to get access to all the controls if you want to change your levels in your microphone receiver, turn on the uh, internal mic on the receiver for example. All of those things have to be done through the smartphone and if you're just relying on the receiver it's not going to really happen. Now let's talk about some of the key highlights on the CM28 by Newer. Firstly, this is the only microphone that actually has built-in recording capabilities with four gigabytes of internal storage, and you can get about nine hours of uncompressed raw audio out of it. You can also attach it through the conventional clip system, as well as magnets, which is pretty convenient. And the receiver has a little screen built inside, so you can monitor your audio levels visually. Also control the gain on your mics through the receiver. And the receiver itself is universal, so you can pretty much use it on any 3.5 millimeter connection for cameras. And it's uh, iPhone and Android compatible. In addition to that, you also have 3.5 millimeter uh, connections for external mic inputs on the transmitter itself, which is a big plus, as well as eight to nine hour battery life. The uh, big disadvantage is unfortunately the sound out of the box isn't the best. The noise cancellation system almost ruins the audio and it has a fairly high noise floor. So there's always gonna be a little bit of background hiss compared to the other microphones. Now in terms of the ultra cheap $15 microphone, well, it is very universal in terms of compatibility. If you get the three-in-one receiver system, you can use it with any uh, lightning connection, any uh, USB-C connection, as well as 3.5 millimeter microphone input. So you can use it on every kind of camera you can think of. It's simple and easy to use. You just turn it on and uh, it works. The noise cancellation also works. And uh, the big drawbacks, obviously, if you're a fan of having usable audio, it's going to be quite challenging to use. The other thing too is it has a lot of radio interference that can really mess up your audio quite badly uh, from the receiver to the transmitter and any obstruction or going past 50 feet is really going to mess up your sound uh, pretty dramatically. Lastly, the battery life is supposed to be six hours, but in reality, our test mostly yielded results in the two to three hour range. Now, the only real scenario where I recommend this $15 mic is if you're on a super tight budget, obviously, but if you're using a smartphone or camera and you're further away uh, past, like let's say 10, 15 feet or working, doing something, your uh, built-in audio on your camera is probably not gonna pick up that sound properly. So this will do a better job of picking up that noise or your audio a little bit better than that. But if you're close up, even a modern day iPhone will completely wipe the floor of this microphone from a quality standpoint and uh, wouldn't recommend it in pretty much any other situation. Now, in conclusion, if you were to ask me, Waj, which microphone would you personally pick? I'm a very cheap person, so if I were to get uh, the most out of my money, it's really hard to beat. For under $60, you get a transmitter and receiver with the Hollyland Lark M1. And uh, sure, the out-of-the-box sound isn't as great. You're going to have to do a little bit of work, but it's light, compact, easy to use, and universal. The receiver that comes with this unit is uh, compatible with anything that has a 3.5 millimeter microphone connection uh, for any external mic. So super universal, you can use it on pretty much any smartphone, tablet, and it's fairly versatile in that scenario. Now, if you had a little bit more to spend and if you wanted, for example, stereo recording or uh, more than one microphone, then you would look at uh, the Lark M2. It definitely, uh, as we mentioned before, it has probably the most convenient form factor from a size perspective and uh, usability wise, super easy to use, very fast to deploy and great for streamlining your workflow. In terms of the Rode Wireless ME and newer, well, when it comes to the Rode specifically, I still think that the microphone is probably still the best sounding, especially at this price point. So if you're purely in it for the sound, don't care about aesthetics or some of the features that it's missing, it's an awesome option. Uh, the uh, newer CM28 unfortunately has too many compromises and the audio quality does not make up for it, unfortunately. Great to have the internal recording capabilities, uh, but just from a uh, comparable standpoint, I think the Hollyland products are a step above. 
But really on that, guys, that's really it. Love to know what you guys think of uh, the best microphones that are kind of within this $150 or cheaper end price point. Uh, do you have any specific recommendations that you want me to look into? And uh, which specific microphone would you guys pick if you had the options of all of these five specific microphones? And uh, check out the description down below for everything we've talked about. We also did a more traditional uh, comparison of kind of the mid-range microphones uh, from Shure, Rode, DJI, as well as uh, Holy Land. So definitely check out that main video if you haven't done so already. And uh, like, share if you haven't already. And we'll see you real soon in the next one. Subscribe. Take care.